y'all. Welcome to this week's What's for Dinner. Guess what? I have a new camera. I have been recording up till this point on my phone. I had a Samsung S8 phone and I finally upgraded to a real camera. I'm very excited about it. But tonight is Saturday. My little niece is over and her favorite meal that I make is lasagna. And I know I've showed this to y'all plenty of times. So I'm going to do kind of a quick run through. Just kind of let y'all watch me quickly make it. I'm not even going to do any discussion because I've showed this several times, but I will link the recipe down below and I'll link one of the videos down below where I make it step by step. So anyways, so let's get into the what's for dinner y'all. Quickly go through what I'm doing. I just am going to brown the meat, I season it up with salt, pepper, um, garlic, oregano, and then I'm just going to cook that. And then I'll make up the cheese mixture, which is just um, cottage cheese, Parmesan cheese, and an egg. If you're new to my channel, here's something that you should probably know about me. I love Prego sauce. Prego traditional. I love it. That's like my favorite spaghetti sauce. <laughs> so to me, you need to use Prego. And I love these oven ready noodles by Borelli. So we just need to put those in there, put your cream cheese mixture. We use mozzarella cheese and of course the spaghetti sauce mixture. And um, I have been making this for several years and this is probably one of my family's most favorite recipes. Um, this is one that gets requested all the time. Hey y'all, welcome to tonight's What's for Dinner. I am going to be making beef steak ranchero. I shared this on my channel, but it's been a while back. So what I'm gonna do is I have my skillet um, heating up right now, and I'm gonna add just probably, this is two, I guess I'll add maybe around three tablespoons of vegetable oil and let that start to warm up. And then I have, over here to the side, I have some beef stew meat that I have cutting up a little bit smaller uh, than what it already is because it was in little chunks, but I wanted it smaller, which I'll show you that in just a second. So we are heating this up, and then we'll add that in. I'm going to add in this meat. Like I said, here it is. It's uh, some beef steak, beef stew meat. Sorry if I can get the words out. And I'm just adding that in. And you can see that I cut it. I should have showed y'all beforehand the size it was, but I forgot to do that. Now I'm going to add some seasoning. I'm going to go ahead and add some garlic powder. I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And another seasoning I like to use is this fajita seasoning. Just kind of stir that up a little. I'm going to let that cook for just a little bit, and then I will show you the next step. There's a lot of liquid in this, but that's good because we want, we were, if you don't have enough liquid, you're going to have to add a little water anyway. So this meat, some of it was a, still a tiny bit frozen, but that's okay. Now I have some onions and bell peppers, and my bell peppers were frozen, so I was trying to squeeze moisture out of those too, but we're going to add these in. And I would just put whatever, sorry, whatever amount you like. Um, I don't even know exactly how much that is, y'all. It was probably half of an onion and probably maybe around half to a three quarter of a bell pepper. And so, what we're going to do now is kind of let this 
start to cook some more. And for some reason, my pan just isn't getting as hot as usual. But that's okay. I'm going to get it to heat up. Just got to get that all stirred in good. The next thing I will add is V8. And this, I just buy them in the cans a lot of the time instead of the bottle because it takes me a lot longer to use that bottle up. And so I'll add this and sometimes I'll add two cans. We'll just kind of see. I bet I will. Well, no, I won't. I know what I'll do. I may end up adding another can as it cooks. But I think what I'm gonna do is use some of my tomato, it's like a tomato bouillon. It's the Nor brand. So now it's heating up, y'all. I'm gonna start out with probably one, one teaspoon of this. Let me try it down a little. And this recipe was, um, I got this recipe from my mother-in-law. I have changed it over the years. This is something, oops, sorry. This is something that she makes. Sorry, I'm turning on my fan, y'all, because it's getting smoky. But this is something that she makes. And so I, I use the base, basically what she does. And then I add kind of my own seasonings and things. So real similar and this is something I've noticed a lot of the German community Mennonite community makes it's not really a German recipe but it seems like something that they make a lot of and I think because like a lot of them are from Mexico and I think this does originate as a Mexican recipe maybe I don't know I just know it is good so I think I will add a little bit more kind of go by the coloring and I'm sorry this is steaming up so much hopefully y'all can see it on camera so now what I will do is I'm going to turn it down some more now that it's doing pretty good and I'm going to cover this but I'm going to keep an eye on it and I'll I keep it I keep it blah, blah, blah. I cannot speak today I kind of keep it not completely shut so some of it can still get out but um, I'll come back every now and then and kind of show you how it's doing. Okay, y'all, you can kind of see now. See, it's already started to thicken up. So I am gonna add some water to this. I probably added maybe a little over a quarter or so a cup. Yeah, probably added about a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna add a little more because so that, that was probably, let's see, I mean, look, I think I had about three quarters of a cup almost. So now I'm going to go ahead and cover this back up and we'll continue to let it cut. Uh, uh, I cannot speak. Continue to let it cook. I'm going to also add some of this, uh, says, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm going to add a package of this also to it. My husband really likes this. This is what he adds to his beans. And to me, this dish right here is all about flavor. So if there is some, maybe, seasoning you really like, you know, that you think would go good with, like, a tomato-based thing, go ahead and add it. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just letting this now cook. And this meat, since it's uh, stew meat, it's more of a tougher meat. So the longer that you can let it sit here and simmer, the more tender this meat will get. So that is what... I am doing. I also have over here in that other pot, I have some potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and boil those. This dish we usually always have with mashed potatoes. And if I would have started this morning and thought about it, I would have made some pinto beans. I could have put them on my uh, pressure cooker, but I forgot about it. And it was just such, the time was, I didn't have the time to really do it. And yeah, because today Courtney and Bryce had to take all their stuff stuff back to the school and I'm tongue-tied like crazy y'all I'm so sorry but anyways yeah we're gonna do that y'all I know you've seen me make mashed potatoes plenty of times I just thought I'd include that into this video we love mashed potatoes and I love adding sour cream that gives it a good flavor so yep okay y'all it is done as you can see it thickens up and so there's kind of like a little gravy down in here 
I ended up adding another half a cup of water to this. And then I also, let me move y'all back out. I ended up adding a little bit more, I think it was one more, or was it, it was about one more teaspoon, I think it was, either a half or one teaspoon of the uh, tomato bouillon. And I sprinkled a little bit more fajita seasoning. I told y'all I like lots of seasoning. And then Courtney's over here stirring. We just did some ranch style beans. So we'll get it all set up yeah, on the table. I put the mashed potatoes on the table. Yeah, so we'll get it all ready and show y'all. Okay guys, so we have the beef steak and chairs done, the ranch style beans, and some mashed potatoes, and we put some homemade mustard pickles, right? Yes, grandma made those. Yeah, that my dad's uh, mom made. And then, I think, is that all? Mm -hmm. So that's what we are having for supper tonight. So we'll come back for the reaction time. All right, honey, I'm starting with you first. His plate is clean, so does that mean you give me a thumbs up? Two thumbs up. Mm. Adrian, he got in here a little later because he was fishing. How do you like it? This is one of his favorites, right? He requests this on his birthday even. I did too. Well, you don't like it as much as I do. Okay, Courtney, how do you like it? She went back for some more meat. Is it good? Me? Yeah. Good. And what about you, Bubba? It's okay. He got a haircut, y'all. Doesn't he look no, so handsome? No. He forgot. forgot his hat. I forgot my hat. Anyways, y'all, look at that. It's almost all gone. This is so good. Oh my goodness. Look at my plate. Almost gone, too. Anyways, thank y'all for watching tonight. Hey, y'all. Tonight, I have my crock pot out. We are going to make salsa verde chicken. So I have two pretty good size chicken breasts that I'm going to place into my crock pot and then we're going to season those up. Out with some salt and pepper and then we're going to add some chili powder. The next thing we'll add is ground cumin. This is a jar of salsa verde that I am using I'm going to pour that whole jar in over the chicken. This is not the brand that I normally use. Um, this one was okay, but I think the other had a lot more flavor. This would also be good with some chopped up like pieces of cream cheese. I've done it that way and it was really good. So you're going to cover it up, turn it on low, and I let this cook for about six hours, seven hours, something like that. We just thought you'd, we'd let you know. Hi guys, welcome back to Kim's Farmhouse Live. Now you can see it's all done. Um, I just used a big fork and started shredding it. I later came back with a mixer and mixed it up. I bought these instant homestyle refried beans from Walmart. I used to make these all the time. I think I put a little bit too much water because they were a little bit um, too thin. So next time I'd cut back on the water. But other than that, they're really good. They taste like when you go to a Mexican restaurant and get refried beans. So we made those as our side. There you go, see the meat all shredded up really good. Okay, here's everything all on the table ready for us to plate it up. But I have been really bad about asking my family for their reactions, but they did all like this. Um, the only thing I think was the beans were a little runny. Okay, y'all, tonight we have our pellet grill and we are making pork chops. My husband has them on. We just seasoned them with pepper and seasoning salt for now. And he's cooking them on high or what? It, no, about, I'm not real good at this one. 350. And then we're also going to put some barbecue sauce on it and we'll kind of show you how we do it. Hey, y'all. Also, to go along with our pork chops we are going to make some little cheese okay we're gonna make some little cheese quesadillas um this is something my husband's family likes to do when they barbecue but i i have some mozzarella cheese here and i'm gonna slice it up and then we have some tortillas and then i'm going to heat those in a pan kind of grill them up some use my little cheese thingy
Okay, to go along with our pork chops, I have a can of the Bushes Maple and Cured Bacon Beans. My children requested some Kraft macaroni and cheese, and then I will be toasting these up in a minute. Okay, y'all, we're gonna let this toast right here. And like I told you, we're making mac and cheese over there. And then, got my beans warming up. So, this is gonna be just a, a good yummy meal. These sometimes uh, my husband will do on the grill, but he just told me while he's grilling because he has doesn't have a lot of room on it, so I would just do this. I'm gonna flip it and see if it's, Ooh, yeah, it's toasting. <laughs> that was kind of hot. Yeah, of course. This is what we like to do when we're making mac and cheese is add a couple slices of just cheese. <laughs> So I'm gonna mix that in. This is what my husband always likes done, but he had to go out there and get the pork chops off. So, and I will show y'all the pork chops in just a minute. He didn't have to add any barbecue sauce because he said they look just fine without it. This cheese may not melt as good since it's not Velveeta, but it's melting, I guess. Okay, y'all, we have our quesadillas, cheese quesadillas, the mac and cheese, the beans, and then back here, y'all, are my husband's pork chops. Mmm, those are gonna be so good. And we also have, I had one avocado I just kind of mashed up. And if anybody wants something to dip them in, barbecue sauce, and then I have never actually tried the AM1 thick and hearty sauce. We love A1 steak sauce. I found this at Dollar Tree and thought we would try it. So, yep, I will let you know what everybody thinks. Kiki's already oh, digging I in. I keep forgetting to ask for reactions now. Okay, Bryce, you're first. It's good. It's good? It's good. Is it good, Courtney? Yes. Yes. And the A1 uh, thick and hearty mm -hmm. sauce? I liked it, Courtney liked it. Oh, Adrian, mm -hmm. how to get rid of it. I didn't know there was a bone in this one. I liked it. And my husband, I don't know, what do you say? Did you like it? He gave two thumbs up. He already got up. Mm -hmm. He's behind me. He won't let me film him, but he did give two thumbs up. My put plate, all that's hand. left is a little bit of fat. Here's his thumb. Oh yeah, here, I'll put his thumbs up. He won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching this week's What's For Dinner. <laughs> Pretend this is a mirror. You can see him now. <laughs> you need to do my head as a green screen. <clears throat> put a picture of his face on it. <laughs> Yeah.